Joining us now, Congresswoman Kat Kamek from House Homeland Security, along with China expert Gordon Chang with the Gatestone Institute. Congresswoman, your reaction to that report? It's good to see you, Liz, but also, I mean, this is incredibly disturbing. We've known for so long about China's attempts to undermine our constitutional republic, and they have worked diligently at all levels, whether it's through the Thousand Talents program, through the Confucius Institutes on our university campuses, or infiltrating our various agencies. They will stop at nothing. And here we are this week looking at a bill to spend billions of dollars that could potentially end up in China. We have to get very serious about protecting our intellectual property and bringing so much of that manufacturing back home. And when we look at the espionage attempts, one attempt is one too many. And we yeah. have to take every single attempt very seriously and stop worrying about the political outcome and focus on the policy and the national security. And Gordon, you've been all over this story to what the Congresswoman is saying. By the way, critics might say, of course, China would try to spy on the Fed. China owns about a trillion dollars in U.S. Treasuries. But this disturbing development coming out of that report from uh, uh, Senator Rob Portman's office is at Senate Homeland Security. They're saying that China actually detained a Fed economist uh, in Shanghai during his 2019 trip there. They detained him four times. They threatened to imprison him. Uh, they threatened his family. They tapped his phone and his computers unless he agreed to give China non-public information and data about Fed rate policy. Yes, and, and we know that the Chinese have done this against U.S. money center banks where they have gotten uh, sensitive information about an employee, blackmailed him, and done the same types of things. You know, Liz, the important thing here is that we have known about China's unprecedented attempts to collect information in the U.S. We've known this for decades, but we don't take the appropriate measures to protect ourselves. You know, year in, year out, we fail to stop this. We have the power to do it, but we don't. And the American people should be outraged at their leaders over this. You know, to what Gordon is saying, Congresswoman, this report says 13 Federal Reserve workers in eight of the 12 Federal Reserve banks had connections to China's influence campaign. One Federal Reserve worker allegedly gave the, the Fed's own computer modeling code to a Chinese university tied to China's central bank. Another Fed worker tried to send large data sets of Fed data to an external website. So how do you stop this? This seems like the no-brainer, and it's staring everybody in the face what's going on. Well, there has to be consequences, and that's exactly what we don't have right now are consequences. We see in a perfect example in my own backyard, my district, the University of Florida, there was a Chinese national who was stealing intellectual property and research. And once there was any whiff of a suspicion, they fled to mainland China and have never been heard from again. And yet we still continue to do business with China. We reward them through favorable trade deals. We continue to allow the lion's share of manufacturing and the lion's share of our rare earth minerals to come from China. What are we doing? We continue to reward bad behavior. And until we actually get serious about putting America first, we're going to continue to have situations where the Chinese uh, Communist Party will work to undermine our sovereignty here on our own shores. Gordon, to what the Congresswoman just said, reports from CNN that the FBI has been probing whether China is using equipment made by China's telecom giant Huawei on U.S. cell phone towers, potentially spying on U.S. military communications, including around Montana's Maelstrom Air Force Base. This is one of three that oversee missile fields in the U.S. This is national security, Gordon. Well, it certainly is. And we know about Huawei. Um, we know that Huawei says it's private, but we also know that 99 percent of it is owned by the Chinese central government. This is a state-owned enterprise. We have so many instances of Huawei, um, China using Huawei equipment to surreptitiously take data from countries, including with the Huawei equipment in the African Union headquarters. For five years, they were downloading information every night. So we know about this, Liz, and we don't do anything about it. We still have Huawei equipment in our backbone. But what's the danger here? What is the danger here for the U.S.? There's two of them. First of all, they take data, but also that they can actually manipulate some devices. Because remember, Huawei is putting in 5G equipment around the world. That it gives, this is your, your, your cell phone, your, your front door, your pacemaker, your car. They're all connected to the Internet. And with Huawei 5G equipment, they can actually manipulate those things, like turn off your pacemaker. You know, too, what Gordon is saying, the FCC announced that Huawei 
was considered a national security threat in January of this year, Congresswoman. We have a Chinese-based food producer buying land in North Dakota just 20 minutes from Grand Forks Air Base. Some of the nation's most sensitive drone information is stored. Getting back to the Federal Reserve story, what's the danger there, Congresswoman? Well, I mean, it, it goes right back into national security. You talk about the farmland, food security is national security. What are the threats that all this data out there poses? Well, the biological data, for example, so many of the COVID tests that we've sent off uh, for two years plus now, a lot of that is owned by the Chinese government. TikTok is a great example. Uh, you mentioned the military bases. Let's not forget our local law enforcement, which is now receiving free drones from manufacturers like DJI. And they're saying, hey, use our stuff, but then, hey, go talk to your members of Congress and encourage them to actually let you use this technology. This all poses a national security threat. This is intellectual property data that is being stolen. They are utilizing it in mainland China. And let us be clear, China is a human rights abuser. They care not for your privacy. They care not for uh, human rights. Okay. They are these for nefarious purposes, and we need to be standing up and pushing back and holding them accountable. There's also reports coming in that China is a top foreign buyer of U.S. housing. Let's watch Newt Gingrich on the story. Watch. The Chinese corporations are allowed to break the rules that Americans have to follow. Uh, the Chinese are routinely subsidizing and bribing professors uh, and researchers. Uh, the, there's no question but that China is waging a soft war against the United States across almost every front. And at the same time, uh, they're trying to intimidate us. And of course, with a weak, confused Biden administration, intimidation is all too easy, which is why I've called for Nancy Pelosi to keep follow up on her proposal and go to Taiwan, take a bipartisan congressional delegation and just look right in the face of the Chinese communist and say, you are not going to intimidate the United States. Gordon, your final word, your reaction? Yeah, Speaker Gingrich is right on all points. The one point that is fascinating is that we've allowed Chinese diplomats to intimidate American academics and others, and our diplomats in China are restricted at who they can talk to. This is an issue of reciprocity, but there's so many things wrong with our relationship with China. We need to cut those links until we can get a handle on it. Got it. Congresswoman Kamek and Gordon Chang, a pleasure having you on. Thanks for joining us.